Are you looking for a 3D printer with a large build volume, but you don't know what to get? Well, in this video, I'm going to compare three of the main contenders. People ask me all the time what 3D printer to buy, and it's really hard to answer them because it really comes down to their individual needs and wants. I think the best that I can do is make a video like this where I have a detailed comparison so viewers can make an informed decision. The way I see it, there are several categories of 3D printers depending on their size. We have the tiny novelty size printers such as the E3D Nano and the modern price Mini Delta, and that's not to say that they're not useful because I have a really cool upgrade coming for my Mini Delta. The next size up I would call small, with print dimensions around 150 millimeters cubed. Printers like the Ender 2 and the Cetus Mark III fit in here, and even my first ready printer at home, my Solidoodle 2. Next up we have the medium size, and that's probably the most popular. These have build dimensions of 200 millimeters cubed and up, and that includes the Ender 3, Ender 5, Prusa Mark III, and the TiVo Flash. The next size up I would call large, and that's the focus of this video. And generally they have an X and Y dimension of 300 millimeters and a height of 400 millimeters. This category was really set up by the original Creality CR10 as it was hugely popular and a lot bigger than other 3D printer offerings at the time. A new wave of large format models have come out recently with all-in-one construction, touch screens, and silent stepper motor drivers. Beyond this, there's the extra large format printers, such as the CR10 S4, S5, and CR10 Max. But that's for another time, because today we're comparing the BQ Thunder, the Artillery 3D Sidewinder X1, and the Creality CR10 S Pro, as well as two other outside contenders, which I'll talk about at the end of the video. I should mention that originally I was intending to include the TiVo Nurius Pro in this comparison, but TiVo were unable to iron out the bugs, and I strongly applaud them for not releasing the printer if it wasn't up to their standards. Anyways, let's start by looking at the overall specs as well as the prices. All three of these printers have a build volume of 300 by 300 by 400 millimeters, and they have all-in-one construction, which means all of the electronics and control boxes are housed within the machine. At the front of that body, they also have some nice color touchscreens. The BQ Thunder and the CR10S Pro have Bowden extruders, and the Sidewinder X1 has a direct drive extruder. The Thunder is the cheapest at 370 US dollars, and that's for the advanced model, which I recommend. The Sidewinder X1 is next at 450 US dollars, while the CS10 Pro is $600 from the official store, although you'll find it as cheap as 540 if you're happy to buy from Banggood. Next up, we're going to look at features of note for each printer. The BQ Thunder has some nice points, such as filament runout and jamming protection. It also has auto power off after the print completes and the printer cools down. It's the only printer here with a 32-bit mainboard, but perhaps its best feature is the cloud connectivity with one-touch slicing and printing from the My Mini Factory app. This isn't perfect, but it is a welcome feature, and I think we'll see it on more printers in the future. It does have auto bed leveling, but it's a temporary clip-on probe. It does also have a removable flexible and magnetic bed, but more on that one later on. The Sidewinder X1 has a really beefy frame with outstanding cable management. As I said in my review, it really is built like a tank. Like the others, it has dual Z-axis stepper motors, but in this model, they are locked in unison by a belt. It has an AC powered mains heated glass bed, so it's super fast to get printing. For a bit of novelty, it also has a G-code control RGB LED next to the print head. Welcome features include filament runout and a direct drive extruder, which is geared with a small pancake stepper to keep it as light as possible. The CR10S Pro has a really nice dual hob Bontech extruder. The feed for this goes through a simple filament runout sensor, and I applaud Creality for including genuine Capricorn PTFE tube and a genuine Meanwell power supply. It's the only printer here with an automatic bed leveling sensor permanently installed, which means you can probe the bed before every print if that's what you'd like to do. Next, we'll compare how refined these printers are. All of these printers are fairly refined, and one of the most obvious ways that you'll see that is in their colored touchscreens. The CR10S Pro has the biggest display, but the Thunder probably has the nicest interface in my opinion. The Sidewinder X1's MKS TFT looks a little dated by comparison, but it does have the advantage over the others of being customizable, which means you can change the graphics and add custom buttons. 
All three printers have silent stepper motor drivers, which means during printing, the only noise you'll hear are the fans and the CR10S Pro is probably the loudest of the three. It's probably worth mentioning that all three were easy to unbox, assemble and be printing in a short amount of time. I can say upfront that all three printers produce really nice print quality. In my initial reviews, which are linked in the description, you'll get to see more. But for this video, I've done three distinct test prints, which we'll use as a source for comparison. They all use X3D PLA filament at 0.2 millimeter layer height, a base speed of 80 millimeters per second, and they're all sliced in Simplify 3D. The first is this cylinder test, and it might look like it's done in vase mode, but it's not. Each layer is built on top of the last, and I find this print excellent for checking for Z banding. As you can see, the results for all three printers are absolutely perfect. My second test print is this vase in vase mode, and I find with single walls that even on these dark ones, when you hold them up to the light and look through, you can check very easily for inconsistent extrusion. Once again, the result from all three printers are stunning with no extrusion issues at all. The speeds are the same, and with a slightly heavier direct drive extruder, you can see a little bit more ringing on the Sidewinder X1 print. My third print is this Stegosaurus, and it's great for checking out fine details as well as for stringing in between the spikes on its back. Much like the earlier two prints, I'm hard pressed to really notice any difference between these in quality. Every printer can faithfully reproduce the fine scale pattern on the back of the dinosaur. There doesn't appear to be any problem with any of the overhangs, and there's also not any problems with stringing in between the spines on the back. In my opinion, the test prints from all three of these are great, and you'll get even better results by slowing down the base print speed. Let's get on to the negatives, and I've been using each of these long enough now to know all of the annoying things that are likely to pop up, although I have to say most of them were identified during my initial review period. Let's start with thermal runaway protection. The Thunder and the X1 had it, the CR10S Pro came without, but I did make a guide on how to update this at the expense of power loss recovery. The BQ Thunder has three main issues. The first is the included slicer profile that came on my SD card was absolute junk. But that's an easy fix by using a slicing profile from a community group instead. The flexible and removable magnetic bed on this printer is prone to cracking, which is what happened to me fairly on in my review period. As there are already magnets in the bed, you can buy something like a wham bam sheet cheaply and add their PEX sheet on top or other print surface of your liking. The nozzle won't be able to reach the bed, but 8 heads on Thingiverse has a quick and simple fix in this adjustable Z height end stop holder. This makes the thinner wham bam sheet compatible and the upside is because it's thinner and lighter, it heats up quicker too. And that's a good thing because the main problem with this printer is the underpowered 12 volt power supply. When I was reviewing this, I struggled to get the print bed up to the temps required for PETG or ABS. In the configuration that I've tested here, this printer is only really suitable for printing with PLA as well as some flexibles. But if that's what you're intending to print, then you have the opportunity to get yourself a bargain. The Sidewinder X1 had the least amount of issues for me. It has no auto bed leveling kit from factory, but it doesn't really need it because the glass bed is really flat. I only added a BL touch to mine because I wanted to make a video comparing it as well as the touch me. There were talks of Z banding on the early models, but customers, including me, were sent a G-code file to print a fix, and as you can see from my test parts, the vertical sides are great. This fix has been included from factory in all printers sold for some time now. You can see that I've added a wham bam bed to this one too, but that's because I'm not good at keeping bare glass clean. This printer now comes with an ultra base style glass bed, and if I started with this, I probably would have left it stock because I quite like those. Some people find the filament holder a little bit fiddly up here, especially if you're using different width spools because you have to adjust it each time, but I don't really mind that too much. Probably the only main problem is the AC powered bed does not have any form of strain relief on the back, but fortunately there is a free and printable fix for that on Thingiverse as well. The CR10S Pro launch was definitely rocky and I experienced a range of issues, so many that I felt it necessary to make a fixes video. In that, it covered things such as filament guides to stop the buildup of filament on the extruder, as well as a replacement fan duct because the stock one broke. It's not great to have those type of issues on the most expensive printer of the three, but by far the worst issue was the inconsistent ABL probe. The adjustments from my fixes videos have mine always putting down a great first layer, but there was a fair amount of trial and error to get to that standard. 
I've read that Creality have now updated the probe on this printer to one that only senses metal, and this should mean that it's no longer affected by changes in temperature and humidity. Perhaps someone can confirm this by posting in the comments below. Now onto my summary. All three of these printers are very capable and produce lovely, lovely prints, but they also all have their downsides. If you only intend to print in PLA, the BQ Thunder is a relative bargain, even after you pay to add a wham bam bed on top. The Sidewinder X1 is a great all-rounder and sits in the middle ground in terms of price and features. The CR10S Pro is the most expensive and does suffer from the most niggles, but it probably has the highest spec hardware and is the most polished overall. Also keep in mind that it does have the largest user base, which means you'll find more support online and more free and printable upgrade parts so you can modify your machine and make it better. If you're choosing between these three, try and think what category you fit into, what are your needs, and hopefully what you've seen in this video can help you make an informed decision. I mentioned at the start, I would have a couple of alternate options if you're looking to think outside the box. Firstly, I reviewed the JG Aurora A5S and found it quite capable. The build volume is not as tall as these, coming at only 300 millimeters, but most people can live with that. The turnoff for me was the proprietary firmware, and that means I was limited in the modifications and things I could do with the printer, but I understand completely that most people probably won't care about that. I donated mine to a primary school and it hasn't missed a beat since. This printer is a little bit simpler than the others, but it still represents good value for money. Another option is a printer that's not from this new wave of large format printers. For instance, my TiVo Tornado. This printer for me has been an absolute workhorse. It has a mains heated AC bed, which makes it attractive over an early CR10, which had slow bed heating performance. If you're looking to save your money and willing to settle for an older design, it might represent the best value option for you. Finally, the future. If you're unimpressed with all of these and you're holding out for something better, I'm just about to take delivery of a new printer for review. Tell me how you think this sounds. 300 millimeter cubed build volume, linear rails, core XY, AC heated bed, 32 bit, open source, all for less money than a CR10S Pro. If you'd like to see that review in the future, make sure you hit that sub button. And if you have one of these printers, it would probably be very useful if you shared your experiences in the comments for other viewers to make an informed decision of their own. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, happy large format 3D printing. G'day, it's Michael again. If you like the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe, and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.